Well, that's not how we want our rockets to fly. In order to make our rockets fly true and straight, we need to understand the second concept of rocket stability, the center of pressure. The center of pressure is similar to the center of mass, but it's a little harder to imagine. Remember that center of mass was that place where all of the gravity forces were concentrated. So they all concentrated right on that center of mass, and that's why I can balance this dart at that point. The center of pressure is that place where all the wind forces concentrate and where all the wind forces act. And let me start by just explaining wind forces a little bit. You've probably done this before. You've probably been driving down the highway on a hot day or the air conditioner was broken and you had your window rolled down and you stuck your hand out the window and the air was moving this way. So the car, pretend the car is moving this way and these arrows show which way the air is blowing. And if you stuck your hand out there, you could feel it get pushed back. And, and that's the, the, the wind forces that are acting on your hand. And if you turn your hand this way, you probably remember that the wind force is pushed even harder. Because the wind forces, the amount of wind forces depend on what area we're showing to the wind, what area is facing into the wind. We call that the frontal area. And so when there's more frontal area, like when I turn my hand this way, I get more wind forces. And when I turn my hand this way, there's less frontal area and I get less wind forces. And if I could take all these wind forces that are pushing on my arm and find the place where they all balance out, uh, someplace about right in here maybe, uh, if, if I was going this direction, I might be farther back, that's going to be the center of pressure. So the center of pressure is a place where all the wind forces concentrate or all the wind forces balance out. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at my, my two darts here that I, that I used before. Um, these are the two darts that, that I designed. Um, and interestingly enough, this green dart was a lot more accurate and flew better than the yellow dart. And let's talk about those and talk about where the, uh, how the center of pressure works on these. So in this dart, if I put it into the wind in this direction, um, it's, you know, it's symmetric all the way along. So it's, the shape is the same every place except for that teeny little blob at the end. And the wind's going to push on it the same every place. So the center of pressure on this, if I could hold it just into the wind and it not move, is going to be right in the middle of this. And I'll show you that in a minute. Now, let's think about this dart. How is this dart different? It's the same length as the other dart. It's got a blob of clay on the end of it, just like the other dart. But what's different? The difference is this one has fins on the back. And when I put this one into the wind, they have a lot more frontal area showing. And so there's going to be a lot more wind force on this side of the dart. And so this dart, the center of pressure, is going to be farther to the rear compared to this dart. Since this dart's symmetric, the center of pressure should be right in the middle of it. But for this dart, the center of pressure should be farther back because these wind forces want to push on it back here. And we have a really cool way to test this. Uh, we, we have things in engineering called wind tunnels. We're going to make a really simple wind tunnel. It's really just called a fan. And we're going to try and measure the center of pressure of these two darts just using a fan and a pin. And I'll show you that next. So here's my wind tunnel and my little setup for measuring the center of pressure. Off to the side here, you can see that I have a fan. I'm going to turn that fan on to create wind. And then I'm going to measure the center of pressure of my darts from the wind generated by that fan. So here's what you're going to need to do this experiment on the center of pressure. You're going to need the darts that you designed. We asked you to to bring your best dart and your worst dart and measure the center of pressure on them. You'll need your marking pin so you can mark the center of pressure on them. You're going to need this T-pin to stick through your darts. I'll show you that. And then you may or may not want to use um, the pencil to help hold it. I think it'll help you hold it. And then you're going to need a ruler to measure the location of the center of gravity. And of course, you're going to need a fan. The bigger the fan, the better. And so this is going to be a trial and error process, kind of like finding the center of gravity. And so what we're going to do is take our pen and we're going to stick it in a place in the dart. And we have to wiggle it back and forth and make that a hole kind of bigger so it turns easily on that. And then we'll hold the dart into the wind 
and we'll see whether it turns this way or that way. If it's exactly balanced at its center of pressure, it'll just stay exactly in one place in the center. And if it turns this way, then I need to move the pin back in this direction. And if it turns this way, then I need to move the pin in this direction. And we're just going to find a place. And kind of like when you're balancing something on an edge, it's not going to exactly balance. It's going to go a little bit one way, a little bit the other. Uh, and that's how this is going to happen too. So I'm going to start with my worst dart, which is this one that I didn't have any fins on. Now we know this dart is pretty symmetric and, and so the center pressure of this should be pretty close to the middle of it. And so we're going to see if the center pressure is indeed at the middle of this dart. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to put a hole right through the middle of the dart because that's I think about where the center of pressure is. I'm going to stick that in here and I'm going to hold that up and it looks like the center of pressure is a little bit off of that point. It looks like I need to move it a little farther this way. So let me try and move it a little farther that way. Probably not very much. So I'm going to move it a little bit that way. Oh, and it looks like that's pretty good. It looks like I pretty much found the center of pressure of this dart. So that second hole there is the center of pressure of the dart. And I told you we had a special symbol for the center of gravity, right? The center of gravity is this like piece of pie that's cut in quarters. Well, the, the symbol we use for the center pressure is a circle with a solid circle inside of it. So it's like a circle with a big dot in it. So I am going to mark on this dart now the center pressure, which is right at this point right here. So I'm going to put a circle there, and I'm going to put a dot there, and I'm going to put another circle around it. So that's the center of pressure of this dart. Now, let's see if I can find the center pressure of this dart. Now this dart has fins on the back of it, so if I put the pin right in the middle of it, it's going to swing back this way, and the center of pressure is going to have to be farther back. But let's start off with the pin right in the middle of it to see what happens. It happens I already put a hole in there, so... Alright, so I'm going to put the pin right in the middle of this. I'm going to turn my fan back on. And we can see we're nowhere near the center of pressure because this wants to turn way back, all the way back. So now what I'm going to do... So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep moving up and down on the top, on, on, put, moving my pin back and forth until I can find the center of pressure. And I'll just do that right now and when I finally find it we'll stop and take a look at where it's at, okay? There it is. That looks like the center of pressure of my dart. It's right at this hole right here. So I'm going to put the dot and put the big circle around it. So there's my center of pressure of the dart. Now I also measured my center of gravity of this dart and it's way up here. 
because I put a bunch of weight in the front of it. So I'm going to put my center of gravity mark in the same side that my center of pressure mark is. So here's my center of gravity. There's my center of gravity. There's my center of pressure. And notice, we're going to talk about this later, that the center of pressure is way behind the center of gravity. And that's what makes this rocket so much more stable than this rocket. And this rocket, here's my center of pressure right there. My center of gravity on this rocket is still pretty far, far forward. It's about right there. So on this rocket, sorry, this dart, here's my center of gravity. Here's my center of gravity. Here's my center of pressure. Now the center of pressure is behind the center of gravity. So this dart flies okay, but they're pretty close together. And this dart, the center of pressure is way behind the center of gravity. And this dart flew much better than this dart. So that's the center of gravity and the center of pressure. Uh, what you need to do now is get your fan, get your darts, find your pin, and go find the center of pressure for your two darts. And then when you're done, we want you to measure the locations of those from the front of the dart to the back, this location, the center of mass and the center of pressure. And you're gonna report those back to us and tell us which one flew better. This should be a lot of fun. Uh, have fun making a wind tunnel in your house and let us know how it works out.